Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's 7.30, it's Monday night, and of course that means the Tilt and Talk Show is sponsored by Bull Sports, principal sponsor of Birmingham City Football Club, Emily Riley, French Polishers, and of course our friends at the Garrison Coffee Company. In between that, we have got our good friends at SCS Autos, and of course, Excessive Blues and everybody else, Image Cleaning, you know, so many people do so many things for us, it's wonderful, it's wonderful. Welcome all, and uh, keep that shirt box going tonight, we've got loads and loads and loads of questions to ask our wonderful guest tonight. Uh, I'll introduce him to you in a minute. In the meantime, we've got uh, young Ollie in the room tonight, who's uh, assisting Chris and the ropes. Hello, mate. And then we've got uh, the one and only, of course, Mr. Mark Adams. Hello, everybody. Good evening. In his robe, of course, as always. Craig Courtney. Evening all, evening. Mis- Mr. Fixer himself. And uh, then there's myself. Gre- greetings and good evening. And Mrs. Brown. Good evening. <laughs> Do we have Mr. Sheen tonight? No, no, we have a Mr. Alan Watson. Uh, we have Alan Watson, though. Well, of chairman. course we've got Alan Watson. How could we forget chairman? Chairman, chairman. of the board, <laughs> the one and only Mr. Alan Watson. Uh, good evening from uh, sunny but cold Sussex. And... Sunny but cold. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it happened to me oh, once, but... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll it's only ever happened to me later. once. It never happened again. <laughs> and of course, our guest of the evening, and I know there's been loads and loads of reaction to this over the week. The one and only is a legend at St Andrews, a legend with every single Birmingham City fan. And we remember the commitment and the effort that this guy put in uh, to our football club and for, uh, for us as fans. The one and only, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Noel Blake. How are you? A bit late on buttons there, Chris. Sorry, sorry. Oh, one job. He gets one job a week, I'll right? Oh, dear me, dear me. Um, okay, as we start the show tonight, then our thoughts and condolences have to be with the uh, the Luton fan that sadly passed away at Birmingham. Oh, uh, Barry Lake. You know, words can't describe because we are a football family. It's not just Birmingham City. Yeah, there's rivalry. Yeah, there's, you know, passion and one thing and another. Um when a football fan comes to our city and doesn't make it home, then oh, goosebumps. we will pay our respects to him and to his family, condolences. And, you know, you never expect these things, but no, how no. awful, how no. awful. No. And I'm sure the respect and the love from every single Birmingham City fan is with your family and your friends. Rest in peace, son. And indeed the football world. Of course, the football club, yeah, everybody here. Not uh, not a great way to start, I know, but mm. Mm, uh, yeah, and, and you know what, we always pay respect at the beginning of the show, Chris, and I think that's always always poignant and respectful. You I know agree. what I mean? I agree, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we've got Noel Blake with us uh, um, tonight then, ladies and gents, girls and boys, and well, what, what a player, what a man. And uh, we'll chat with Noel in a couple of seconds, but uh, uh, first off, 3-0. Take that in, 3-0 against Luton Town. Yeah. My son, I was at work on Saturday, sent me a picture of St Andrews. And I thought, Git, you're in there, aren't you? And I said, nice one, mate, lovely. And he got his daughter, nine-year-old, with him. Now, I know about the protests that go on outside, but my do- my granddaughter, this is my granddaughter, was sitting in the Gilmerick, lower, and all these tennis balls, lemons, and even bottles were being thrown onto the pitch. And do you know what that little girl said? Daddy, I don't want to be here. Huh? That's my football yeah. club. That's my football club. That's my son and my granddaughter. And if I count my dad, four generations of us have been there, right? Four generations. And, and they all probably, look, protest outside the ground, by all means. Inside the ground, it's about 11 players and a manager on a football pitch. That's my opinion, right? Don't upset my granddaughter because I don't like it, right? A, a child saying, I don't want to be here, daddy. Oh, going to dad. Wrong. Yep. Completely and utterly wrong that people should make her feel like that on a day out. End of. I didn't hear anything about the bottles. I didn't know that. Uh, well, I, I can only say I can only say what Scott said yeah. to me, right? Not, and, not, good, um, not good. Not good. No, 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 no. Stop frightening the kids. They're children, for crying out loud's sake. Yeah? yeah. They, they, they want to go and they want to experience it and 
And, um, you know, like I say, protest outside. They do get to hear it if you're outside, right? But when you're inside, come on, come on. Your protests have been on the news. It's been good, right? Mm -hmm. There hasn't, there's been very, very little trouble. I know there's been a couple of arrests, right? But like, leave the kids out of it inside the stadium, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, 3-0. Mark, what's your take on that? Did you go? Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, also, yes, of course. Don't, don't say of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was in, yeah, I was, I was there as usual. Um, I thought it was the best home game in weeks, to be honest. I thought we passed, passed the ball well. The, the new boys have just given us a new uh, new dimension. Incredible. Totally different dynamic. Um, we just looked so comfortable and we looked at a different proposition. I mm. just wish it was this this sort of performance, you know, two months ago. Um, don't don't no, worry no. too much about that, put Mark. And I'll tell you why. It's because we've got Stoke this week and me and Noel live in between the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That'll be a tasty one. I'm looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just wish, you know, this was the Blues of seven, eight weeks ago. Cause we, mm. I mean, we're, we're not going to go down. You know, that was never in question. It's up there with the Perry Bar question. You know, it's, mm. you know, it's not going to happen. Um, but I was really, really impressed. I mean, some people are saying Luton was off, off the game on Saturday, but, you know, th three goals, clean sheet, and it's nice to have a bit of pos positivity for once. Mm. Oh, you know, it, it's um, a lot of the games have been like, dare I say, like uh, like chores, but he's actually looking forward to the next the next game now, the next home game, the one after and, that. And it's also nice to come on here on a Monday night with, with mm. a positive thoughts and positive minds and, <laughs> and you know, it's, it's, where are we going to take actually this quite, week? It's quite unusual. It's quite rare. Yeah. It's not unusual. It's, it's, it's been rare. Late. It's been late. Yeah, yeah. But apparently, <laughs> apparently, according to Luton manager, they were well on top till the um, tennis balls got thrown on. I don't yeah. agree with that. <laughs> right. What, 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 what time did the tennis balls get thrown on? 14 minutes. 14, 14 minutes. minutes. Yeah, 14 what minutes. What was the significance of 14? Valentine's Day? Ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when, when, um, what minute did we score? The six minutes had passed, and we, we, we still hadn't got in there half by the time the, 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 when we mm. scored. It was the first mm. first time we got in their penalty area. Mm. Um, but they, for all their pressure, and, and they, they did have a real good go at pinning us back, mm. didn't create anything. Uh, there was one feeble shot that um, that's what you had to say, but the rest of the time. We, we, we coped. I mean, we, we kept giving the ball back to them. That was the problem. But once we stopped doing that, uh, there was only one team in it, and, and we scored three very good goals. Uh, and we should, maybe maybe should have had two or three more. I mean, can I, sorry to butt in, Alan, just to say what a masterstroke signing Lyle Taylor, because he is just... Oh, incredible. The options of yeah. Incredible. Do you know what? If we can get those three together, Mark, on permanent mm -hmm. deals, I know I know the one is already, right? But if we can get those other two on permanent deals, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, it's my God. It's not, it's not going to happen. I, no. I, th I think Hernandez is more on whether Norwich get relegated. Because if, mm. they, if they go down, they're going to want him. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, of course, he's, mm. he's, he's not really in the three-year plan, is he? So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, as Michael Woods says here, in Luton's last nine, they've won six, drawn two, and lost one. And uh, mm. that's, that's you know, an incredible record for a team like Luton, who's, you know, mm. not being funny. They're, they're, not, yeah, yeah. they're not mugs, are they? No, they're not mugs, no. They're, no, they're, no, they're no. right. No. no. Mm. So, yeah, really mm. enjoyed it. Here's a fun fact for you. When was really? the last, last time that a man from Curacao, Cuba, oh. and Montserrat... All scored for Birmingham <laughs> in a single match. Uh, probably 1874. <laughs> it hasn't happened before. 1874. <laughs> I was just saying that before the show, Alan. Yeah, mate. I was, I was thinking that myself. <laughs> OK, that's enough about the game then, uh, Craig, unless you've got anything to add to that, have you? No, I was just going to say, we've said that about having a nice weekend and joining today, but actually walking out the ground and, and actually having a bit of pleasantry between the fans, what a difference, you know, uh, a win like that actually makes. And I've got to agree, I don't I don't think some of those players that are on, li uh, are on loan are going to sign for us, but mm. they put themselves in the shop window, don't they? So if they turn mm. up, yeah. they play for us, they don't sign for us. Some other club's going to come in for them. So I'll tell you what, 
I don't care they're on loan. If they're with us next season, brilliant. If they're not, fair play. They've won themselves a contract somewhere else, but they've turned out for us and that's what matters to me. But we always miss out, though, Craig. Yeah. We, we, we do, out. unfortunately, after... We, we, I mean, we have... We go back over the years. We've had some fantastic loan signings. Um, and it is a shame. But I'll tell you what, when we look at our loan signings as well, Look at the names that we've had down there that have gone on to mm. massive mm. things afterwards. Mm. You know, we mm. we do tend to pick up these youngsters and have them turn around. And lot of, Taylor's, yeah, he's thirty-one, so he's no spring chicken, but he's also not pasty. So, nah, you know, nah, nah. Nah. he does. He looks a very fit young man. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was telling Alan, I doesn't look like thirty-one-year-old at all. Very I confident. Couldn't, I couldn't give him a run for his money, let me tell you. No. <laughs> no, OK, no. let's go to our superstar <laughs> guest now tonight, then the one and only Mr Noel Blake. Noel, welcome to the Talk and Talk show, and uh, it's great to have you with us. Thanks, guys. Thanks for, thanks for um, having us on, yeah. <clears throat> brilliant, brilliant. Um, like, you were just a machine, weren't you? I mean, the, th- the three of you there, sometimes it was back in the day, my goodness me. Um, I suffer from short-term memory problems, but my longer-term memory is, is really pretty good. Um, difficult to remember my own name sometimes, but they. <laughs> yeah. um, but when you got when you three were in in that in that team, it, you were like brick walls with like stanchions behind you, and then behind that was diggers and like armored cars and everything. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it, was like, yeah. it was great. It was brilliant. And do you know what? That's what a Birmingham City fan wants. Well. When you say the, 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 the three, what, other, what others were there you're talking about? Well, it's Mick, wasn't there? <laughs> the Beast, yeah. The yeah. Beast. Oh, come on. You, you know the other one. No, listen. We, uh, Blues have always had, um, when I, certainly when I grew up, grew up watching them in the 70s, they had personalities. Yeah. Uh, mm. big characters. Uh, my favourite player um, at the time was Roger Hind. Oh, superb. Yeah. Big Roger, yeah. yeah Take his teeth out. Yeah, Big Roger. He was playing alongside Stan Ireland. You know, that one. Yeah, Stan Ireland, yeah. Uh, John yeah. Roberts. They, they were the centre-backs. I used to watch them, and obviously Joe came along later. Obviously, he had Lachie and people like that. So, they, they, and, Bob, and Bobby Atten. They had personalities. Um, in, my, in my time, he was the centre-backs there. They came from TC, you know. Um, listen, they're characters, but they're also very, very good players. Mm. Um, we knew how to look after ourselves individually and collectively, and that's that's what we wore. The old expression you wear, you know, sort of wear your heart on your sleeve. Um, we had a badge on our chest, and we had to uh, we play for the badge as well. Yeah, too right. <sighs> what a great thing to say. Because everybody that plays for that badge, you can turn around, and we will remember your name. Mm. Most definitely. Yeah, it's, it's it's. I think it's important. You know, you you, you, you just touched on. I um, spoke a moment ago about um, some of the lads we've had on loan, the clubs that are on loan over the years. Um, and I've been fortunate to work with, 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 with quite a few of them, especially the English lads like Jesse Lingard and people like that. You know, and good young talented people, and they've come to Blues. Rebel Morrison come to Blues, <coughs> done well, and gone on to to to, to do well elsewhere. You know, um, if any club you you know with the loan market is using it properly, um, get your recruitment right, using it properly. Um, there's some young, good young talents out there who are not getting games within their. You know, obviously clubs only have 25 pros and 25 um, sort of that they can pick from during the, especially the Premier League players. Good, very very good young talented boys out there. You know, and then they want to play football. They want to play football. You know, and, and I know we're all blues connected with the blues and what have you, but Birmingham City is a big football club. It could be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it could it, be. It's it, it, a big club. It can be big. It is a big, it's a big club, but it could yeah. be huge, right? And I've said this to so many people the name Birmingham, second biggest city in the country. Hmm? It's, it's crying out for somebody to just come and say, you know what, I'm going to invest in this because I know it can go big. Yeah. That's what we need. Mm. That's yeah. what we need. Yeah, well, this, this is this is this is not now. It's been going on for years, hasn't it? Yeah. 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 Every year, don't we? It's been going on for years. We've got, we've had these issues for years and years now. You know, mm. uh, lack of funds, lack of this. Obviously, the big thing for me, you know, is at the start of the season when the stadium, after the stadium was closed, 
So that, was, that, that was an embarrassment. Mm-hmm. That was an embarrassment, you know, yeah. because we should, that shouldn't be happening at, at the club. If you, if you <coughs> have that issue, you get, it, you get it done in the summer. You get it done in the summer. Well, they had the whole of COVID lockdown to get it done, didn't they? Yeah. You move over, over and over, yeah. get it get sorted out, and then you come back in, you kick, you kick off the season when, it, you know, coming back from COVID. And okay, you get, I'm going to... The ground is still closed. Yeah. I'm going to go on to that, Noel, right? Because the club said they want to communicate more. Yeah. And they've had that very first meeting and both myself and Chris Brown will be going to the second meeting. Right. I'm going to hurl some abuse at me. You can do, but I will ask the questions. <laughs> and if you've got any questions that you want me to ask, just message me. Right. I don't care what those questions are, how many nerves they jangle. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. I've got nothing to lose. Right. If you've got a question, message me and I will ask the question and deliver an answer. Now, the club promised an update on that stadium within two weeks. That expired on Saturday. Was it Saturday or Friday? Something like that. And we haven't, to my knowledge, and I'm, I haven't checked today because we're, we haven't, at this present point in time, had the promised update. Birmingham City, listen, if you are going to make us football fans a promise, damn well deliver Deliver that promise and keep to your word because the distrust will continue until such time as you do and you grow some balls and you put the information out there. Uh, just, just, just to clarify, that's it's the it's the contracts as they're waiting for to say that, but but, but, I, but Chris, I agree, but Chris, I agree, Chris, they should they should be saying that update, that that update should have been. We are now waiting on information from the contractors. We haven't got that information yet. We're going to keep in touch with They haven't done it and they've they've failed on the first promise. Not good enough. And it's a picture that meeting is not on tonight, mate. I'll be honest with you. Can I ask you a question there, Nick? Yeah, of course. Have have, Have you guys got a spokesman? Um, it's a collective, I think. Right, we 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 don't need a spokesman, no, right? We we've got the people out here who are writing on this on this wall here are our spokespeople. No, right? I get that. I'm sorry yeah? to cut the question. I cut the I get that. But what, the point I'm making is sometimes with <clears throat> people in hierarchies, they if you, there's one person that they can go to. Right. We've never, in 11 years, Noel, had yeah. anybody at Birmingham City Football Club, apart from Davo, right, who, who for a very short time was, was interacting, we've had never had any representation with the football club, anybody really, we've never even had a, a, a current player on the show. We've never had a current player on the show. We've never had, we, we've had the photographer, we've had the, you know, all sorts of people that work in the background, yeah. but the club have never, ever once gone, you know what, this Tilt and Talk show, it's a, it's a big thing on a Monday night, let's get stuck in with it. And they've never embraced us, not once. They're, miss, they're missing a trick. Um, I'll give you an example. When I was at Leeds, they had um, similar sort of issues at one point, but then what they had, the ground was owned by the council, et cetera, et cetera. But what then they did... Mm-hmm. They had a supporter on the board. Hmm? One supporter on the board. It was their. It became the liaison officer between the link between the fans. Yeah, and, yep. Which is brilliant. And it, and it really worked. I remember the guy uh, Ray Fell, the secretary, and it really worked well. So there's a there's a, there's a chain of command, and there's a, you know um, people could relate to people, and things were getting fed back in. You know, hmm. Not, uh, a supporter's eye view. You know, yeah, do you know what? Do you know what they did to us? Do you know what they did to us a couple of years ago? No? Ask that question. What they did to us a couple of years ago was take away our pucker pies. Right? Part <laughs> of our part of our strategy is having a pucker pie. Yeah, and it is. And then we have these awful dog awful pies for a year or so. So we did Piegate. We, we were doing videos about the pies and how awful and bad they were. And they've changed back now to Pocker Pies. Look, I know it's only a very small thing, but fans <laughs> make a difference. <laughs> I, yeah, it is, mate. <laughs> I, I, look, I would be more than willing, right, to represent the fans, but I would ask the questions that the fans would be asking. And I'm not afraid to do it, right, because you all know I'm a little bit outspoken sometimes. And if, if there was a board meeting there and this serious question came up, I would ask it. I ain't got a problem with it. Don't have a problem with it. Never had a problem with it. Never will have a problem with it. And then I would deliver. I would make sure that I deliver that answer to the people. The people that matter are the people that are writing on that shout box right now. 
Yeah. And Nick, and, it's, it's yeah. fair to say the fan led review. I know we've mentioned it last week, and there's a few other things come out this week about it. Yeah. One of the main things that's part of that when you actually go through the whole uh, pack, which, yes, I'm sad, but I have read through it. And one of the things that's in there is that fans will be key to the running of the club. They are. They're the lifeblood, Craig. Yeah. They'll be involved. With the veins. With the veins, with the arteries, you know. They're the heartbeat. And we're the veins and arteries, mate. That what Knowles just mentioned though, about having a fan as part of the spokespeople, you know, being there to pass on those messages. Yep. That is a key part of that review. I'd, I'd willingly fact, do it. Chelsea, Chelsea do it. And, mm. and, you know, people forget about it, but it's such a massive club and they have people going into their board meetings. I think it's absolutely superb. Mm. I think um, with, with the fa- with the fan led review, if it if, if it all goes to plan, I think it's uh, it's going to be a game changer. Completely, yeah, yeah. But it's got yeah. to go to plan, Chris, and they've got it's to got deliver to. on what yeah. they promised. They've already yeah. failed on one. And it's mm. not good enough, and I will tell mm. them to their faces. Well, it's they'll have no good enough. They'll have no choice if the fan led review, uh, backed by the government, goes through. That's what we're all hoping for. Mm. It is. It's mm. going to be a game changer. Mm. Because you know what, when you when you spent a lifetime at St Andrews, yeah. And, and Noel, you'll know this, you're 60, you're the same age as me. You, you've spent your lifetime there, right? You've laughed. you've laughed, you've cried, you've, 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 you've sobbed, you, you've, you've, you've been elated, you've been over the moon, you've had every single emotion. And it's all about what happens on that pitch, yeah, with the players and the crowd and the crowd reaction and the, and the, and the songs and, and, you know, the passion that we deliver and the passion that you as players deliver. Um, and, 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 and it isn't a single solitary thing. We have to come together and it has to be the whole team and every single person who pays money to go through them turn themselves is part of the team of Birmingham City Football Club. I mean, following on from that, Noel, can I ask mm. you, if you, put in the fan, if you put yourself in the shoes of the fans, Noel, what do you make of the whistles and the tennis balls and all the rest of it? Would you go along with that or do you think it's... Well, I'm a, it? I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Mm. Um, I don't agree with it with inside the stadium. Mm. No, I really don't. And no. I'll tell you for why. I've had, uh, as a player, and we've had demonstrations against boards by your own team at your own ground. And thankfully, Saturday the result went our way. But I can assure you, it does affect the players. Yep, I'm having sure it been, does. Having been a player when I've when my own supporters have not been been there, it does affect you um, because it it. it as much as you, you, much as you try not to, it does throw you off. Throw you off scent. It mm. does throw you off scent. Um, and as Nick said earlier, by all means, we, we, we Blues fans need to protest. There's no it's mm. about Yes, that. yes, I agree. I agree. We need to protest, but it's doing it where it's not going to fuel the fire and get the football authorities against the club for starters. Mm-hmm. You know, it's this the all right. People may say under the championship. But, you know, trust me, it's transmitted all over the world. Mm. The world. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and then on YouTube, which is available, you know, in space. Yeah. So if, if we're looking to attract major buyers from from elsewhere, mm. and they're seeing that sort of uh, behaviour, um, then what are they going to think? I, I'm, I'm glad you see that way. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Different ways of looking at it. But because it like the, the players on on Saturday as well. I mean, my my other half was watching it on on the uh, the Blues TV, and the one thing that she said was, the players were laughing. The players were laughing at people throwing tennis balls on. Now, if they if they're there laughing, then anybody that's on the camera, and I know it was broadcast on Sky, I know BBC put it out on Twitter, BBC put it on their website, but. It just doesn't, to me, it, it, it meant absolutely nothing. It was like 60 seconds of people just pelting the pitch with yeah. things they didn't need to do. You yeah. know, they mm. voiced they voiced their concerns. They, they were loud afterwards, right? It's almost as though there needs to be a trigger to get people talking about what's going on. But also, it, it, is this... Is this now beginning to wane? You know, have people, and 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 I'm not saying you know I condone uh, people not not protesting and stuff like that, but have people actually thought to themselves, we asked for some communication, we asked for some updates, 
And we've got it. We asked for some changes to the stadium. We've got it. Now is it time? Continue to voice, but do it in the right way, but back that team when you're in the stadium. Like Absolutely. Moses, it impacts the players. No way it can't. I mean, come on, we had a steward run on the pitch and he's been, you know, that poor lad got an absolute grilling when he got off the pitch. <laughs> right? But also, social media made him out to be an absolute master. He's, you know, he's the bees and he's on, on social media. That's not right. He's been paid to do a job, Craig. He was paid to do a job yeah. and he failed. Therefore, he must be dismissed. Hmm? The, the, oh, the, the, if it goes in the referee's report, that could, that could be trouble for us. You yeah, know? massive it's trouble. The, it's the same mm. spot where the, the idiot run on and it grilled. It's, it's, that oh, was, was the corner it, it came from. Right that, was that was the corner that was closed. <clears throat> you know, and people are going to look at that and say, there's a problem here. You know, we're going to close them again for two weeks or, or whatever, fine them 100,000. But we can't afford to be fined 100,000 pounds every time. Uh, no, it... It was funny, but it was, I, I, you know, I, the, the laugh, the, the smile soon went off my face when I realised what was actually happening. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, you're talking about putting the players off. Uh, the first one where they had the banner in front of the um, the director's box, that 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 put our, our team off. I can't remember which game it was 10 minutes to go. When we were all over the place in the last 10 minutes, and I'm thinking, you know, They've lost the concentration. So it perhaps worked in our favour Saturday, but it, it, it could have easily gone the other way. Mm. Well, my concern my concern on the game on Saturday was, in all honesty, the, the, the Sheffield United game, the whistles, the atmosphere was ugly because those whistles could cause so many people about to kick off with each other. It achieved absolutely nothing. Yeah. Uh, Scott, Scott Rothwell's put it on his head. Well, he had two lights on it. I, think, I do think that's harsh on the steward. That steward is a paid professional with an SIA badge, yeah? Paid to do a job. I'm just looking at it from my perspective, right? If he's paid to do a job, stand there and do your job, right? By all means, take your, take your, take your high-vis jacket off and do the protest outside, by all means. By all means. But don't let the world's media see one of our stewards who is paid to do a job run on the pitch. It's ridiculous. Yeah. The, the old secretary, um, what's his name, J uh, Jones, he once told me that the stewards, if the stewards uh, picked the ball up and threw it back on the pitch, they'd be sacked. That's not their mm. job. There's ball boys mm. to do that. They're supposed to be looking at the crowd. And if, if they're looking at the ball, they're not doing the job. And he said, that's an instant dismissal. So mm. that's, that's how, you know, you'd think, well, you know, just kick the ball back, you know, stand. But no, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to do your job. Uh, and it is a safety thing, after all. It's not, you know, it's not like being a ball boy. You are responsible. All right, okay. There's, 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 sorry, I'm sorry, Alan. There's some other, there's some other comments coming. Richie, Richie, uh, he was trying to get a ball off the pitch. Yeah, but the game okay, is that not not his job. Referee blow up. Referee stop the game. Clear the ball off the pitch. The, 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 the ref had blew to start the game again when the person came on the pitch. So actually, and and it was. I'm not condoning a tennis ball, first of all, but it was one. Out of all the others they cleared off the pitch, there was one on the pitch. And but it came it came on after the game restarted. It came on after the, the game thrown started, on yeah. after the game restarted. And and that's that was a problem because you, you're waiting for that. They got all the balls off, we're ready to go again. And as soon mm -hmm. as we did, we, we knew that was going to happen. Uh, yep. And of course, the, 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 the lad, you know, let's not be too critical. He reacted, and he, he probably standing there thinking, you know, oh dear, I've done this wrong. You know, he, he realised he got it wrong, but he, he's he been told to get the balls up the pitch, so he reacted. Bad luck. Do you, know, do you not think as well? He, where, where he was standing, he was he was looking back at look like in the corner where all the stewards were. So I I, I was thinking my first reaction was that he, he'd been told by been told another to steward to go yeah. on and to go on and get. No, it. okay, I know. All right, okay, I have to take a little bit of that back. What I said earlier, not a lot of it, but a little bit. I wasn't there, so I didn't see the incident. Right, I will try and find it and, and have a look at it and, and bring a more objective view. Right, um, but surely the leader of K two security would have had those people in a room before the game started, knowing when we all knew that tennis balls and stuff would be thrown on the pitch. And this is your duty. This is how you act, and this is how you react. Yeah, yeah. What about as well? Because there is a, some other comments on there, and I think one was just off my comments around the stadium. So, just for clarity, when I say they've done stuff at the stadium, what I mean is the front of the cop 
has had, albeit it's a facelift, but it's had a facelift and it looks a thousand times better. Inside the stadium, Cobb Corner used to have a, a blue board. And in fact, at one point at the start of the season, still had Adidas as our sponsor showing on there. That's now been replaced and that's now showing pictures and, and, and artwork from games. So that's what I mean about the changes. There are still, obviously, fundamental works, as we've already covered, that have still got to happen. But a couple of the things that people had asked for, which was, let's spruce up the stadium, let's make it look better, that has started. And, and, mm-hmm. and you know, that's what I mean by my comment. Those are the areas that have improved. A violent sense is it's either going to be bans for supporters or fines or fine points. Uh, please, outside demonstrations only. I don't want our club going further downhill because this... Ain't the Birmingham I know. I know we've got to do something, right? And I know we've still got to be up there and still got to be vocal about it. But be guarded on what you do do, please. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right, Noel, you're playing career with Blues then. How many games did you play? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> was, oh, come on, Noel. I was 70, 75, something like that. I'm not sure. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, like That was back in the 70s, wasn't it, yeah? Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 so more than that in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> what, was it, what was it like playing in front of a big crowd at St Andrews back in the day with the old cop and the, and the, the old Tilton? It was great. It was great. Um, it, was it was great being in the stands, mate. Yeah, it was It was great in, in, in more ways than one, obviously being a blue nose and uh, a local lad from Spark Hill, Spark Brook. Um, then I moved over to Stetford in my teens. Um, I I used to go and stand on the cop when I used to go down in my mates. I went to, when I came to England at 10, my uncle my uncle took me, first took me down down the Blues in 72. Um, remember the first game, Wolves, we played the game, the first game I went to was against Wolves. Mm-hmm. The walls of the Mike Bears and Derek Dugan of that, of that, that period and that sort of thing. Um, and it's it just sort of ingrained with you, you know, walk across the, up, up through um, Small Leaf across the bridge there from, from, from um, Donovan Road, where we grew up. And then just see, you go to the game, you, you used to go with, with your mates from school. I went to Golden Ehrlich, secondary school, after mm-hmm. the road. And <laughs> t- Tuesdays, it's a long, win- long winded way of me answering your questions, but Tuesdays, they used to play in the old, I mean, t- alternate Tuesdays, and they used to play in the reserves, used to play in the, um, the football combination. Um, the likes of Gary Emanuel, Vince O'Keefe, Mickey Rathbone, and Ricky Sprague, and people like that. He used to, used to bunk off school on a Tuesday afternoon, you know, um, go and, and go and watch a game <laughs> and stuff like that. But we knew, um, a few of us used to do it. Um, I know my, my, my mates are still go down now. I don't go down as often as I can, because obviously with, with work and one another. But they 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 still go down all the time, you know. So I used to go and stand in the cup, when, you know. Um, and even when I when I went over at Villa, I used to get get back after. Oh. Yeah, ten pound fine. <laughs> <laughs> the game, we finish. We used to kick off at one o'clock, two o'clock sometimes, and get back for the last half hour, you know, mm. like that. But. Playing in front of those uh, passionate fans in the, in, the, in the big crowds and that, like I said, it was great because you always had that sort of a dream one day, one day, that's what you wanted to do, uh, mm-hmm. to actually taste it um, and be part of it, you know. The, 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 the people say, no, so-and-so is one of our own. Well, we, you know, there, there am I. Mm-hmm. No, we've, uh, we've had a few people update us on the show box. For your reference, 96 appearances for Blues. Uh, and five goals scored. So one of the questions that's come through is, how gutted are you not to have gone 100 appearances? Of course you're gutted, but you, you, know, you, you don't think about it when you're playing. You don't think about it. You just play when you're selected. Um, I didn't miss many uh, through injury or anything like that. Also, I think I missed one game through suspension. Um, and I, miss, I remember missing the game at, uh, against Arsenal at uh, St Andrews. I did my hamstring against Forest and the Bok- and then Saturday in a bank holiday. I missed the game. Um, was okay for the following weekend and stuff like that. So I didn't miss too many um, while I was fit. I was okay. I was, I was always selected. So I've been doing something well. Um, yeah, but it's just one of them where, you know, it's time to move on. And so, it's, and, and so it went. 
A uh, question from uh, Steve Job. He says, uh, can Noel give us his views on the 1983 derby at Villa Park when he exchanged views with Steve McMahon at the final <laughs> whistle? Now, you don't have to answer. Don't have to answer it. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, obviously, the, the, the game, the game, you know, it's well documented. The game, you know, was there. Uh, People may want to call the Battle of Villa Park. Um, wet, wet, horrible day. Uh, windy day, local derby. Obviously, I will all be remembered for two things in that game. Um, one, missing the penalty. I don't know. To this day, I, I, sometimes you reflect and you, know, you look back and you're thinking, normally I'd take the penalty and I'd blast it. I would hit him hard and I'd hit him hard down the middle. For some unknown reason... I don't know whether whether because when I look back and I try to reflect on it sometimes is, is whether because there was a bit of a delay uh, and I remember I always remember going to get going to fetch the ball and it was in front of in front of the old ten and I'm thinking yeah I want, I'm, I'm I'm putting this away but and as I'm putting it away I'm got, approaching it I'm thinking I used to play with Spinchy and I'm thinking hang on a minute and Spinchy to be fair to him is, is a big unit and he filled that goal he's a bit, you know but some unknown reason I changed my mind. And as I said, it was a wet day, and I did—I just didn't make no connection with the ball properly. And he could have thrown his cap on it, you know. I just didn't connect with the ball properly because I changed my mind. I knew if I hit it, um, and I got the idea from watching Mickey Shannon taking penalties. Um, Shannon, if you remember, used to smack him down the middle, um, and I just got the idea of watching TV, and then I did the same. I didn't miss. That's the first one I missed, and it's the last one I took. You know, that was <laughs> it. And obviously. From my point of view, the thing people always talk about is the McMahon incident at the end of the game. Um, you know, you look back on it. When you're involved and at the height of it and the emotions are running and what have you, they sometimes do things that you're thinking, what the hell did I do? But at the time, for me, he said something derogatory um, and I reacted. And it was as simple as that, you know. Um, and I, I hasten to say here and now that it wasn't anything about a colour or anything like that. But I just felt he was said what, what, what he said was derogatory. Um, obviously, Steve and I have been come up across to us many times since. In, in a good way, or yeah, no, we're fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's yeah, been yeah. You know, he was, he was, he was managing at uh, Blackpool and Swindon, and I was manager, managing and assistant manager at Exeter. And you know, we we came across each other. We've been to functions here and there, even abroad and stuff. We get, we get, we get on well, it's, you know. But when when you're on the pitch and obviously local derby, and then thinking back to the game as well, if you remember, um, there's a bad tackle on Kev Kevin Broaders, which I think in the end, you know, more or less cost finished Kev's career. Um, the, the, listen, local derbies, you know, it's a passionate game. Definitely, definitely. I've been fortunate enough to have played in a few local derbies up and down the country. I've played in one in Scotland, a Tayside derby. Uh, Dundee and Dundee United. Trust me, that is a proper derby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can, I, can I take you back to uh, December 27th, 1982, uh, in another similar fixture, uh, and a goal you scored that day. Um, <laughs> we took on the so-called European champions. And uh, can you fill us in on your thought, more pleasant thoughts, shall we say, uh, about that day? Yeah, I mean, it was my first uh, first game against uh, against Villa. Obviously, it's coming from coming across from there to, to to the Blues, and I knew obviously I knew the lads, I knew my, all, all the lads. I'd sort of grown up with them. Um, you know, I was involved in the the, the, the group that won the league and the, the European Cup. Although I didn't play any of the game, but I was involved in the squads and stuff. Um, and I just the Villa fans obviously gave me pelters as the same Scotland. They gave me loads. You know, Villa reject, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They gave me loads, and as you said, right? I said they were, they were champions of Europe at the time, and what have you. And it was a game we we were down near the bottom, um, and it was a game that we felt over the Christmas period and full house. Everybody's up for the game, you know. And on the day, we played really well. after the first 15, 20 minutes. Once we went in front, we played really well in terms of not what you'd call. And I, look, I don't remember the game. Not not what you'd call fluid football or anything like that but what we did you know we, we ran we scrapped we battled we had jumped we had tackled we had fought you know we got in behind them and we didn't we never really they never really looked like sort of um, how can I put it getting in behind us you know um, and I think 
the, the, the scoreline at the end of the day was was about right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I must I must tell you a, a little story about that game. My my poor father at that time was very very poorly, and we tried to get him home for Christmas, and he he, he stayed till lunchtime, and we had to take him back to hospital. So on the way to the game, I visited him, and boy did he look very very sad and poorly. Uh, I went to the game, and. Um, I went back on the ward at East Birmingham and I saw the most healthy, happy looking man I've ever seen in my life. It, it mm. like he'd come to life. It was such a beautiful moment. And uh, I've always wanted to thank thank you and, and the boys for that day. He gave my he gave, gave my father an extra day of decent life. Thank you very much. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. That's just blown me away, mate. I've got goosebumps on me, goosebumps Fantastic. now. Yeah. Oh god. Oh. I was right at that time. I was, I was only like uh, I was five or six, so I'd have been playing with my Star Wars figures. <laughs> I wish I'd, have gone, I'd have wished I'd have gone to that game. To be fair, yeah, but yes. I, I love I love hearing you know all these stories, not just from from like play, ex players like Noel, but you know like Alan just said, you know all the little anecdotes and stuff. Well, old people yeah. like us. <laughs> no, I think you were uh, <laughs> characters. Characters. Chris. Oh, sorry, Chris. Bob. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How are you? I was just going to say, it's fair to say there's uh, definitely a lot of love, like we said at the beginning of the show out there for you, oh, Noel, and loads, oh, well, that, 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 loads yeah. of questions hitting the show box. Cool. So I'll just uh, shout out a couple now. We've got uh, Shane Goff, and he said, uh, we've all heard many rumours, many rumours. Um, however, is it true that you once kicked the villa dressing room door? And also, rumour has it that you locked Julian Dix in a broom cupboard. How true are they? <laughs> true or false? First one, false. <laughs> I don't know. I never... No, he knocked no, it. He knocked the villa door. The amount of changing room door that I've been accused of booting in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's, there's even one, there's even one, we had two lads, we had three lads sent off at Pompey, Pompey at Sheffield United. We had three players sent off. I was, on the, I was still on the pitch and I was supposed to kick the door in. <laughs> and, and I said... You know, they came to me from the FA about fining me for doing that, you know, um, and I w wasn't guilty. So that, that, that was for that. But, I mean, I'm big and I'm black and I'm ugly. And then people... <laughs> oh, well, I'm not yeah. Dixie, 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 Dixie was, Dixie was um, he was a little rascal. He, he was a great lad, Julian. He was training with the Blues first team at 14 years of age. Yeah. He, he's come back from Bristol. And then he moved up and stayed in uh, Small League um, in, in, with Martin Cool and lads like that. A great lad, Dixie. I don't remember locking him in a cupboard door um, <laughs> and that sort of thing, but uh, it may well be true. I don't know. <laughs> Killed that myth. He's a lot of friends. I think he's a lot of friends. That's almost like a no comment interview, isn't it? I don't recall locking many door anyway. You're still working for the FA. They can't do you anymore, surely. No, I don't, I don't work with them anymore. So. No, right. Oh, right. Don't you? Okay. <laughs> Noel, a really, really, really seriously interesting question, right? And again, I'm never shy to ask a question, right? And everybody loves you, Noel. Everybody loves you. What's your take on taking the knee before a game? Good question. My take on it is. What, what would I do? I've never been in a position. Um, sometimes gestures are there to be like the, like the Blues fans with the tennis balls and so on and so forth to get reaction. Now, do, would I take the knee or would I do something in a different way? I don't know is the honest answer. Uh -huh. My take on it is it, 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 it has had a reaction. It has had a, it's had, it's had a, it's had a reaction. Has it served its purpose? Again, I don't really know. Um, because I see the majority of players still do it and clubs still do it. Um, one or two players will do their own thing differently by standing or what have you. It's a difficult one because I don't know. I've never been in a position. Mm -hmm. As a black person, as a black person and a black player, former, a, a, a former black player, I think there had to be something um, drastically uh, done. Um, whatever that looks like, I don't know. But obviously, like I said before, I think the Americans started it with one of the American foot, American uh, NFL players, and then it's you know at, at a snowball effect, obviously with the, with the um, uh, Floyd incident and so on and so forth. Um, it's possibly the best thing to do 
um, thinking about it. It's possibly the best mm -hmm. thing to do because it's, it's, it's showing unity there and then, you know, prior to going into battle. Do you know how I show unity? Yeah. You pull that shirt on, I couldn't care what colour you are, mate. I couldn't care. If you've got a shirt on with a Birmingham City badge, you're my hero immediately, and I love you. End of. The unfortunate thing with that, though, you see, it's not the players. No. It, it's, yeah. people within, it's people within mm. who, behave that, who behave that way. Mm. And unfortunately, the good people get, uh, the, the good people get lambasted with, 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 with idiots. I worked for an Indian guy for 27 years. I've had black people operate on my body and try to get it, you know, this was before my football career, um, tried to, yeah. which lasted an hour. <laughs> that long? And, and, and you know what? You know what? I, I shake it. I don't care. It just, it just, it baffles me. It baffles me. Um, and, and, and I don't care. You're a Birmingham City player. <laughs> Or you're another player from another football club. I would never abuse another player from another football club over race. Never, 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 ever. Right? Mm -hmm. And we got pulled up on this a few months ago, didn't we, Chris? Mm -hmm. Right? About calling somebody a jippo. You remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, and, yep. and you know what? It never, never crossed my mind. Jippo, jippo. And you do it. You do it. But it never crossed my mind. that That's, that's like an ethnic kind of, not an ethnic, uh, like it's a type of community it's, themselves, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, what, 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 what the need does, it reminds you of things like that. You know, it, it, it nudges you and say, you might, you might have said something that you haven't talked about, but people doing the need reminds people every week that this is a, a problem in society. And I, 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 I think, I, I don't like the fact that the, the Birmingham team are mixed now. So, so some do it, some don't. Uh, the Luton team on Saturday all, all joined hands and stood together. I like that. Because it's yeah. all in one. Yeah, yeah. The Blues yeah. team yeah. and the yeah. is, is some do and some don't, and either either all do it or do something else. Uh, I think it served its purpose, Alan. No, and I think it's it is now time to change to something else. Yeah, because I don't, I don't see why it affected me, people I, that much. Right, where, where where this gets me is look, George Floyd should never have died that day. Never, right? Never have died that day. Um, but, but this always reminds me of, of what he did just prior to that. Yeah. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, That, yeah. that yeah, was yeah, still yeah. a human being, and he should never have been killed that day. Never. Right? Yeah. And there was enough, there was enough people around there to prevent that uh, and, and to arrest him under normal circumstances, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they failed. They failed him. They failed the world, to be honest with them, mm. They failed the world. Um and, and, and I, I, I just wish it was, it, it's my absolute wish in life that we could just love each other and get on. It's nice yeah, to be nice. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, nice the, to be nice. The thing is, though, uh, um, and you can see, when you're a player and the black player that's been abused mm -hmm. around the country because of my colour, yeah, mm. it is an awful feeling that's inside you. Uh, this is why I wanted to ask a question, yeah? You, you'd rather someone come up to you and, and give you a right hook. Really, yeah. Then you can give him a right hook back. Right. You, you can solve it. See, because, maybe it's just me. Maybe, maybe it's just me and I don't see, see colour as a difference. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. Let me say this to you. One of the reasons, I'll give you an example. One of the reasons, yeah. why, reasons why I went to Leeds United is this. I played there for Portsmouth and for 90 minutes, I kid you not, every time I touched the ball, there was two. There was myself and Vinci Lair. Remember a little mm -hmm. Vinci Lair? Yeah, yeah, I remember him, yeah. Nothing with Vinny. Never had a problem. He never got anything. Whether because I, I was an aggressive type of player or what have you. And every time I touched that football, it was shoot that the N-word. What N-word? Mm -hmm. That effing N-word. Really? And Birmingham City was all been my first team, my first club I supported. Mm -hmm. My second team was Leeds United. Do you know what? The first team I ever supported was Leeds United when they got beat against Sunderland in the FA Cup final, yeah. and all my family wanted uh, wanted wanted um, uh, Sunderland to win, and I felt sorry for Leeds, and, and that's I had a little bit of an affinity, but I don't know. I don't have a second team. Yeah. Do Birmingham City women? Yeah, well, that's the um, what about the reserves? <laughs> Anybody, mate? The kit man, the guy who mows the grass, right? <laughs> the guy who paints the lines. Everybody there is my hero. I promise you. But, but that uh, the, that's the reason why I went to Leeds. Mm -hmm. there. And then when I became, if you like, the first West Indian-born player to captain that club, mm -hmm. what a proud I, moment! Hold on. I started to see the amount of black lads I started to go to that club. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But therefore, I felt that I'd have, I'd have, I've had an effect. I've played my part in helping to change things. And it's a bit like the question you posed a moment ago about taking mm-hmm. the knee. Mm-hmm. People are doing what they think is right to help to change views. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I had the same incident when I played for Portsmouth after I left the Blues in the early days at Pompey. Yeah. Form, the form dipped when I started off well, then the form dipped. Someone on the mm-hmm. wife and that were back in Birmingham, etc. Happens to Chris every week, mate. Yeah, sorry? <laughs> yeah, it happens to Chris Brown every week. Yeah, <laughs> my, um, my, 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 my form yeah, yeah. My form <laughs> dipped. And then some of the section of the Pompey fans, they were just abusing me, not because of my football. Mm. Well, a combination of my football, I would say, to be fair to say, but also my colour. And it became your own fans abusing you about your colour. Mm. But then I said, you know what? I've had enough of this. I'm, I'm gone. I'm not coming back. Came home, went back home. Mom said, get your backside. So showed them what you're about. And Alan Ball, God rest his soul. My Pompey teammates and the chairman, John Dickett, and John Deacon, as well as the makers, we ended up having this. And the, the proper Portland pro- pro- supporters, they came out in abundance and they they changed people's views. Right. So yeah. we spoke about a moment ago, you know, Blues are split, some are standing, some are taking the knee or whatever. Mm-hmm. Solidarity. And that was what, in the end, that got Pompey promotion. Yeah. yeah. You see, go on, Alan. Alan, go. Sorry, no. no, no. Okay, can, can, uh, Oliver just wanted to come in on that uh, on that subject. Sorry, I thought, that, I thought Oliver was Alan. He looks like no, him. No, no, <laughs> Oliver. No, you can't see Oliver. <laughs> go on, Oliver. No, I was, I was just saying, in, term, in terms of with the knee as well, you know, back when it like all first started, you know, you had people booing. I I don't get why it affected people. Like it's it's what how long before before the game? What a five five ten second thing. It show it shows it shows that people are trying to change. But I don't understand. I don't understand why it affected people. I don't understand why people were against it. Right. Okay, Ollie. I well, I, well, I I can answer that because at the Stoke game, right? I thought Stoke were going to kick off, and I started booing. And then everybody took the knee, and I was still booing because I wasn't watching what was going on. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and a lot of people like kind of turned around and looked at me. And obviously, I stopped. And I'm not a disrespectful person in in, in that respect. And and I can't, I don't look. We've all got two eyes, two hands, two feet, one tongue, you know, a nose each. And uh, just because of skin colour, it doesn't it doesn't bother me. And I think that's what bothers. It's it bothers, it's only a me, a personal thing. What bothers me is that. Because I just don't care, it doesn't bother me. I think that's what affects me with taking the knee. I, just, I don't. Can you understand what I'm coming yeah, to? I know. I know you're coming. From. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, yeah, I'm saying, like, uh, look, this is just absolutely me, right? If you're a black player and you've got a Birmingham City shirt on, mate, you are honestly, I love you. You're my hero, right? Because all I want you to do is go out there, perform, and play well, and make me happy for the next week. Mm. And you're easily pleased. And then, and then, <laughs> and then, I'm just going to come back with that one because you yeah. see, that, that's a great statement as a blues fan and you're a black lad playing for blues. You just want to see mm-hmm. it and you, you don't matter. But then unfortunately, unfortunately, and it hurts me to say this, but it's fact, mm-hmm. there are blues fans out there who will boo the opposition black players. Nah. Yeah. 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 No, I, all right. I, right yeah. Then. Okay, now think... you'll get what you get from me, right? A space, yeah, yeah, space, no, space. I'm just making um, you know, Yeah, what, yeah, what, no, what, what, what I'm right, saying yeah. is, is I, don't, I don't get it. I don't see it. Like yeah. I say, I'm so grateful for that Indian man for 23 years of work. I'm so grateful for the black surgeons that have operated on my body to put it back together. I'm so grateful for, uh, you know, the black bus driver that drove me safely. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for anybody who in society does anything nice for anybody else. Yeah, yeah. So it should be. It should be. Yeah. It should be. No. Um, but however, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not ashamed or afraid to have asked the question, as you can see, no, no. right? I call, I'll ask the questions, no, no matter what they are, because I want a reaction. I want to understand how you feel, and I want to understand how other people feel. No, no, it's a great, great question. Great but we still love you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Craig. Yeah, no, so a um, couple of other questions that are coming. One that I think is, is particularly uh, good at uh, this point in time, but if I start off with one from Stephen Gell, and he said that um, out of all the people and management that you've worked with, which one particular manager did you take a piece of advice from that you've taken into your own coaching career, and who was it? 
Um, oh, bloody. In- influences, I think. Uh, yeah, it's these influences, yeah. yeah. I've, I've, yeah. I've been fortunate, really, in terms of the managers I've, I've had. Obviously, Ron Swans I've had twice. <laughs> um, Howard Wilkinson, Billy Bremner. I had a guy in Scotland, Jim Duffy. Um, Graham Turner, I went and loaned another kid to shoot me from, from the villa. Um, Graham Turner. Some really good influences. But in terms of taking something into coaching, it would be a flick of coin between Howard Wilkinson and Ron Saunders. Howard, to a lot of people, is dour and, you know, this personality or whatever. I'm Ron. <laughs> I had a pop-up in my front left leads and what have you. And the interesting thing was I didn't realise how good he was until after I left. Mm. Started to sort of get my head on to my thinking about going into coaching and so on and so forth. He was ahead of his time. He was, a, and I promise you, he was ahead of his time in terms of the, the sports science and the diets and nutrition, etc., and the way we train or what have you. He was ahead of his time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you see people wearing GPS vests now and all that. We were doing it with different way. We taking our, our pulses and so on and so forth, doing different. First time I ever encountered it. Really. Ron was very similar in terms of things like that, especially the, the, uh, when we were at Villa in terms of the way he worked us. We worked hard. And, you know, people talk about the, uh, the, the, the Leeds Gaffer now, uh, Bacella, what his name is, in terms of how they, how they work and their work ethic and, you know, 100 miles an hour and they the, what man for man all over the place and all that. All that stuff, that was being done back then. So the big thing I took away from Ron Saunders as of going into coaching was if you're gonna be, if you're gonna come a coach, get the spine of your team right. Get the spine. I always remember those, those, those. If you're gonna become a coach, get your spine of your team right. And Howard was the same. He, he, he drummed at home to us at Leeds. You know, Howard's organisation um, and attention to detail was second to none. Second to none. So it's it's a long-winded answer. Um, but I would, it would be hard for me to, to separate out of Wilkinson and Ron Saunders in terms of that. Yeah. Other managers were good, but in different ways. Okay. Um, just just on the Ron Saunders thing, this was a bit bit light-hearted, but uh, uh, does not remember Ron Saunders trying to get rid of the gypsy curse? Did he have his boot soles painted red? Is that a myth? Fact. Fact? <laughs> no. You know what, but fact. you can... Something like that with one word, and that was the only word you could have used. Brilliant. Now, <laughs> Madame, Rosi- Ma- Madame Rosinia. I wasn't expecting that. No, yeah. normally, mate. <laughs> no, it was true then. Yeah, it was true. Oh, we, yeah. Um, we, I we, think we, that was what back means, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Wow. We, uh, we, 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 we had our boot, the sole of our boots was painted red. No. Yeah, and because um, they were talking about this gypsy curse and in the yeah. Hilton Bowl. Yeah, and they they came down and did people spoke, and we were given like um, a pamphlet, a coin, and stuff like that, still in the love thing. Like, <laughs> all the boots were painted red. I can't believe this. And I, and I remember we we played we played the Albion, um, and it was my first goal for the Blues. We played Albion at uh, St Andrews. People people after the game, people were saying this happened in the midweek, and then people were saying that's. So, sort of sucked the ball in to get for us to get the penalty. Kevin Dillon's got the penalty to win the game 2 1. We went 1 0 down, uh, Peter Easto scoring, and then I equalised. And then Dill got the penalty late on. And, you know, that was ref- it was all ref- referred back to that because of the um, the curse was lifted and so on and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly wasn't, mate. It certainly wasn't. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that, that was the story. I remember, I remember we went to Arsenal the following week and. Um, Ivory and the, the cameras were following us going in and trying to look into the skip, you know, the, the boot skip and stuff like that. And then we ran out the, the sole of the boots, you know, and stuff. Yeah, it was true. Yeah. Did you, when you, when you found out about that, no, did you sort of buy into it? Or we sort of try not to laugh, we sort of nudging each other and saying, What's going on here? You know, no, I mean, I think in, 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 in back in the day, you know, play, players, you know, you, you were led by your manager. Mm. Led by your manager, you, you know, you didn't really um, challenge your coaching staff because what, whatever they said went. You know? mm. so it's not like now where you know you see players come and challenge. It wasn't mm. like that, you know. Yeah. Mm. Mm. You fell out with the man about a transfer or whatever, and so on and so on in the team. But in the main, whatever the gaffer said, you, you, you followed. You follow. Incredible. Uh, it's an interesting question from Scott Rothwell again. Can we ask Noel if he ever had the opportunity to return to Blues in any capacity? 
Uh, yeah, I did actually. Um, after I left Pompey, um, or told told leaving Pompey, I came down and spoke to Gary Gary Pendry. Uh-huh. Um, and at the time, I was seriously thinking about coming back to the Blues. Uh, but as it turned out, I sat went went up went met him at St Andrews and went upstairs and sat in his office and, and, and speaking with him and whatnot. And then the reason why I didn't sign, but well, part of the reason why I didn't sign, um, I had a few clubs to go and speak to, um, and I told the chairman Ken Weldon that I, you know, I've, I've got a meeting with Leeds, a meeting in the following week, a couple of days' time, I think it was. And then he said to me, "Go and speak to uh, Leeds, and then come back and tell us what they said." And that put me off. That just put me off. Uh, <laughs> That's not speaking ill of the dead, you know, because I know he's passing. Yeah. He's no, 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 no. Yeah, but that's, that, that was part of the reason. Another part of the reason why was I'm in a meeting with Gary and Vince Oberson was the centre half at the time of the club. And he, he knocked the door and came in and sat, sort of plunked, plunked himself down. And I just thought, how unprofessional. You know, I always remember, I just thought, how unprofessional. You know, I'd come back, if you like, from Pompey, where I'd been four years, and they did things a little bit different, you know, professional, in, in a, a, a lot of ways and, and stuff. And I just thought, no, this wasn't right. And then, so I went, I went up and I spoke to other clubs, you know, um, and people, London clubs were offering whatever, whatever so-and-so offered you, we'll double it and all that. I said, no, I'm going to Leeds. My mind was made up to go to Leeds. And I think going to Leeds was, if you like, with the destiny. Um, it was. It was. It was. It was after the incident I told you about with you nobody know, and N word F and blah. And it, it was just meant for me to go to Leeds, um, and I did turn. I don't have no regrets in terms of going there because I helped to change um, per, uh, per, uh, perceptions and views. Mm. Um, and, you know, remember going around to school with with, with, with Vinnie Jones and people like that. Trying to educate people about. <laughs> oh, Christ. Just, I'm not being funny, mate. You and Billy Jones walk into a school, them kids are going to do what they're told to straight away, mate. No matter what. Certainly have, yeah. 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 Wow. But, but that's, that's, that's what it was. But that, so that's, totally, yeah, the chance, that's a chance I had to go back. Uh, yeah. Go back to the Blues. But since then, I, well, well, I've been, you know, over the years, I've heard things muted, especially in the coaching capacity and all that, but nothing nothing ever materialised from that point of view. But that's, I did have a chance to go back as a player. Right. OK, um, what do you do now, nowadays? At the moment, I work as a, for myself as a consultant um, and looking after young players. Um, I do some mentoring as well. I want to mm-hmm. take, take my mentoring on to another level. Um, at the moment. Still, in the, still in the game then, no? Yeah. Yeah, but not not. I'm still in the game, but not in the way I wanted to be. Um, what, what did you want to be? I still want to coach. Right. But I, and you still want to coach now? I can't. No. Right. I don't know if you. I don't know if you guys were aware of it, but I had a stroke about six years ago. Ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, did, I did know about that. Yeah. Um, and then what? What it does is t- t- today. Um, you know, I could, I've got all the energy in the world and everything's fine. You know. mm-hmm. But when I when I when I coach, I coach with passion. I'm a passionate coach. That's who I am. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not one of these coaches that sit there like you know and you don't exist. No, I'm I'm, I'm involved. Yeah. Um, people. Some people. One minute people say they look at Klopp, they look at Guardiola and uh, Tuchel. You know, and, and they say they're, they're they're animated. If it's a British manager, you're animated. If you're a foreign right. manager doing it, it's great. Well, I'm just being myself. Mm. Just being myself. You know, when Ericsson was sat there not doing anything and managers like that, and they're saying, look, he doesn't care, he's not involved or whatever. Well, that's not me. That's not me. We've all got our own innate personality. You, you, are, you are what you are. Uh-huh. I'm working my place. Uh, I hope you don't mind me asking, no, but how, how did the stroke affect you? In what, in what way? Oh, good God. How did it affect me? It changed my life. Yeah. It changed my life. I went through. Yeah. Listen, I went through spells of depression. Uh, I still suffer with anxiety. Um, I had the, the the suicidal thoughts. Well, I'd be walking around, looking at trees, and thinking that won't take my weight, and so on and so forth. And yeah, I'm gonna, you know, asking my wife sometimes if there's any rope in the garage and stuff like that. And he, he, oh, no. The thing with it is, is it affected me more emotionally um, 
than physically. It's affected me physically, but more emotionally. And in the past, I've, I was one of those ones when, I, when people said about people who took their own life. <laughs> I always felt it was, um, it was sort of selfish. Um, but it's only when I experienced what I experienced that I realized it wasn't self. You're not, they're not selfish. What it is, you're not in control. Mm. You are not in control. Wow, wow. You know, um, thankfully, um, I'm, all, I'm over that, um, that sort of uh, extreme uh, case, case of that. But occasionally, like I said, I still have the anxiety issues from time to time. But in the meantime, I'm, I'm okay. That's good. That's good. good. Thanks for being so candid and honest, mate. That is, that is commendable, honestly, I promise you. Because there's a lot of people out there that, that suffer, and I've done it myself, right? Mm. When you get somebody who is Noel Blake, who is loved by everybody, coming out with something like that, you've just made an impact on a lot, a lot of people, I promise you. Absolutely right. right. Yeah. Well done, yeah. well done. Yeah. Def- definitely. Mm. Well, there's so Ooh. many so many questions on the show, but we are never, ever, ever going to get through them all, Nick. I know, mate. I know. <laughs> we, need, we, need, we need Noel to do his uh, 1 to 11, if you've got that ready, uh, yeah. Noel. And uh, we can run through that if you want to. Yeah, um... A lot, of, a lot of people think it's, it's, it's a lot of my mates and stuff like that, but it's not. <laughs> it's um, the players that I've played with the club. Um, there's one or two who I've missed out, who came close to my thoughts. Um, but, but anyway, here we go. My goalkeeper is Tony Colton. Um, he's the best goalkeeper I've played with. Um, yeah. I had a good bloke. He's been through my career. Yeah. That's okay. uh, the footballing goalkeeper. You know, he, he used to play outside, five aside, TC. He was like, his left foot, you know. Uh, my right back, David Langan. Ah, oh, brilliant. What a player. Four bats up and down. Four bats have always been doing it. Mm-hmm. So we've had Langan on the right hand side, Dennis on the left hand side. <laughs> you know. Um, and then this one might surprise people. Um, I had Jimmy Egan at centre half. Right. Yeah. I don't even remember Jimmy Egan. Uh, yeah, the Jimmy, was he the, the full back? Yeah, Aggie yeah. was one of these players who could play anywhere on the football field. Yeah. Um, for me, he was underrated. Uh, we took him to Blues Guns from Coventry. I think he was on a, a, a small fee of free transfer and that. But he was a good player. He was good in the air, quick as anything, and could play off both feet. And didn't mind a tackle. Didn't mind a tackle. You know, but a good lad as well, Aggie. So he, he would be my, my right side centre half. And next to him, I'd play Pat Van Den um, Patsy again. For me, at the time, I thought he was underrated and underused at Blues, in my, in my opinion. Um, I know he played maybe after Mark left. Um, but that would be, be my back four, back five, with Tony in goal. That back four there has got plenty of pace. All of them are quick. And they're all comfortable on the ball. If you, you know, you talk about modern day players, they, they can feel that. And you know what? 1v1 with Dennis, 1v1 with Lange, go on. Nothing's going to get past that. My midfield four... Um, I've got Abby Gale on the right hand side, um, Robbie Hopkins on the left hand side. Um, you know, Robert, Robert's my uh, my best man in football, best man at wedding. We've been mates since schoolboy days. Oh, that's brilliant. We played together, yeah. together in my youth team captain when we won the youth cup. <clears throat> um, I told him that he was coming to Blues. I'll never forget his face. Gaffer wanted to speak to him, and that uh, we came up from a game at Brighton and all the Blues. Played at Brighton, and I had to go and find him. I knew mm. I find him. Uh, he was in the blues. You know, the biggest shame for him was that he never he never got to go uh, and play at the uh, Leyland like, Cup final, did he? Yeah, that's, mm. uh, that's 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 so uh, that's life sometimes, isn't it? You One know? of them games that I sobbed with joy at. Yeah. Sobbed with joy. Yeah, so they they were my two wide players. Are we one side? Up at the other side. Again, both got pace. Both got goals in them. Both love the tackle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and passionate players, and they could deliver the ball off either foot as well. The two central midfield players, one may surprise people, Kevin Broadhurst. Um, he's a proper leader, Broad, proper leader, and in my opinion, a bit like Jimmy Hagen, underrated. But he, when Broad, when Broad's in our team, we were a better team for it because he did the yeah. um, so called unsavory work, you know. Um, he, 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 he could tackle Kev, he could tackle. The other thing with Broad, I never understood this. His name is Kevin, 
and it's still <laughs> PB AIN. Yeah. 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 How many people get that wrong? Yeah, typically, yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe the registrar just made a simple mistake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Funny, it was Jewish as well. So. Oh, don't leave, leave it. It's a vowel. It don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> and then me and the central midfield players, Kevin Dillon. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Bill, yeah. Bill was a class player. I played him at Pompey as well. A class, top class. I played off both set plays. Goal scored in the field. Uh, the, the biggest moaner in the world. The biggest moaner. <laughs> the player. And then up front, you know, if you want to call it 4 4 2, 4 4 1 1, in the way the shape is. I've got a little Ian on the sides, so God rest his soul. Mm, mm. Um, I'll tell you what, Bunter could, we used to call him Bunter. Bunter could play anywhere in that front six. You know, he was that good. Technically, very good. Picked it up, drove at people, drove past people. Put a shift in, scored goals. You know, good team, good team guy, um, player, but an all round really, really good guy. Nice. And sadly missed. Mm. And then up front, the only, only only one number nine for me in the, from my time at Blues. And we had Mick Ferguson and people like Tony Evans and Neil Watmore and stuff like that. But the one I'd play for is the Governor I said, Big Mick Harford. Mm. Uh, yeah. Top guy, um, top human being, and what a centre forward. What a centre forward. That's a well beaten team killer from the show. <laughs> but you know, with Mick that, that run we had that year where we needed to I think we had to win six out of seven, five out of seven to stay up, you know, and he led, he, he took them all on, you know, with his Chris Nickel down at Southampton and Dave Watson and all that. You know, going into Coventry with Peak and King Clark. He took them all on a bit, you know. He led the line and you know, he he, he was uh, he was a top top centre forward. Just lacked the yard of pace, Mick, really. But a six 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 three six four, he's never really going to be that explosive. Yeah. But what he yeah. knock it up to me, he'd hold it up, you know, bring others into the game, um, get across into the box. He's a good, he can finish with his head on his feet. You know, give, really, it me, really, give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. And you, and your manager. Managers, the manager for me. Obviously, I only had the one manager at Blues, and it'd be Ron Saunders. Yeah. What would I say? Yeah. 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 Wow, what a team that was. What a team that would be. What a team that would be now today. And that would be worth like a fortune. A fortune. Okay, we're into the last 15 minutes, ladies and gents. Craig Courtney, can you quickly uh, do the card that's now been filled? And more money raised for charity. Wonderful, wonderful people. And uh, with this, I uh, should say that uh, all the, uh, the money's raised are, are going to fact which is our fund at the moment that uh, we've got running to uh, help purchase tickets for people to visit games uh, at, yeah. uh, at St Andrews. So thank you to everybody that has been involved. We sold what, does, do, what does the fact stand for, Craig? Okay, so I'll, I'll, just, I'll <clears throat> just give a quick explanation on facts. Okay, so there are, there are quite a few kids and a few adults that maybe or may not have had a rough time lately. Uh, it may be that the kids not not, visit, not not been to a football game before, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, or that the, the parents are having a bit of a bit of a rough rough time at the moment, and it's really just to give them that chance to go to a match, just sample the atmosphere, etc., etc. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to raise funds for an adult and a mm-hmm. child, to, or, or maybe two, uh, to go to a game. So Excuse. far. So far, we've had a fantastic donation from our friends at Borsley Labour Cup, who, who have donated tickets for the end of the till the end of the season, which is absolutely fantastic. We've had a donation from our friend Mr. Mike Wiseman, and also we've had donations from our, our, our fans on um, uh, Tilton Talk Group. Excellent. So, so we've so we've got tickets now for the rest of the season, and That's also we've got, we've got tickets going into next season. How about, that? How about that? How about that? I love, yeah. I love you, Birmingham City fans. You are, you are just wonderful. Absolutely, I promise fantastic. That. Sorry to jump in, Craig. Carry no, on. it's all right. Um, so I can say that the uh, random number that has been selected mm-hmm. is number uh, fourteen, okay. um, and that is Norwich City, uh, which belongs to uh, oh. Fantastic. Our very good friend, Lindsay, from... Uh, Lindsay, 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 Lindsay. Lindsay, Lindsay, yeah. Excellent, oh, wonderful, wonderful news. Well done, Lindsay. That's Congratulations great. to you. Into the last uh, 10 minutes we're going there. So we're only doing some 10 minutes, ladies and gents, because talking to Noel Blake has been an eye-opener tonight, an inspirational eye-opener, I promise you. Um, 
it's Valentine's Day and I got the wench some flowers for Valentine's. I've got self raising, I've got plain. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're in so much trouble. Uh, oh, do, you, I don't think you don't believe me. I'll go in the kitchen of petrol, mate. Let me tell oh, you. I'll believe <laughs> it. I'll believe it. <laughs> and um, anything to do with the flower shop or anything to do with Valentine's Day? Flower shops and Valentine's Day. Off you go. I'm going to start you off with Tony Hart and Tim Flowers. <laughs> Tony Hart and Tim Flowers. There you go. There's two have, for you. Uh, There's two. Danny, for you. Danny Rose. I'll stick Ooh. Danny Rose. Yeah. Uh, what about Lee? What about Lee Bokeh to the bow? Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's mm. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. uh, I just want to. Um, it, it, Violet says uh, this show has been a great insight into Noel Blake. Mental health. Uh, mental health. Illness, racism, etc. Something I would love to hear more about. <laughs> Not only are you a legend of blues, but I respect you so much for everything you said tonight. Sorry you had abuse of people due to your skin colour. Heartbreaking to hear. That's from our friend Violet. Absolutely. Uh, right. Well done, Violet. Thank you for saying that. Uh, we've got uh, Peter Undlove. Oh, we've got Danny Rose, Craig Cardner. Craig <laughs> <laughs> <Thank> Cardner. <laughs> Cardinal, oh yeah. Oh, oh dear me. Oh dear. I'm really so I'm really so no, but they they, they they crack me up every single week. George Friend. Mm, okay, that's not really love, is it? Uh, no break my heart. <laughs> Who was that? Who was that? That was Violet. That was Violet. Ace of Heart. Ace of Hartford. Hartford, I like that one. Well done, well done. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Like Joe Joe oh. Hart. Yeah, I've got Joe Hart. Hart. Yeah, 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 yeah. All Hart. <laughs> uh, Nico Vars, Nico Varzen. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> a whole lot of, a whole lot of hot and low. Ron Flowers, Ron Flowers. There oh, we go. dear. What about, can, what about Candle Lip Barsky? Lip Barsky? Candle Lip Barsky. No matter, move on. Lost <laughs> yeah. we, we did. <laughs> <laughs> Petal check, petal check. <laughs> petal check. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Where'd you get him from? Oh, Patrick Peagre. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, oh we, my God. Probably need, uh, we probably need predictions for uh, oh, the next game know. as well, don't we? Yes. Uh, blues versus, well, Stoke versus Blues. It's up here in Chipland. Uh, oh. No, you'll know all about eating chips around in and around Stoke. Um <laughs> <laughs> Every time we beat him, I have a bag as a celebration. <laughs> and a bowl of flowers. <laughs> and a bowl of flowers. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one that's beat me. That one has done my stomach. Is so, so what is it about uh, the chips? Because I don't really understand it. Are they well, it's, 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 it's staple diet chips. up here. It's really? massive chip eaters, yeah. It's staple yeah. diet up here, chips. Um, there are more chip shops than humans. <laughs> 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 is you <it> that bad? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Go on, what, what, what do you say, Chipland? Chip eaters. Stokers are known as chip eaters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, you drive I've around been, Stoke occasionally, sorry. don't you? I've, I've, I've been here thirty years. God, yeah. yeah. And I've never heard that before. Google chip eaters when I, we finish the show, right? Never heard that before. <laughs> Google chip eaters, right? You, you've driven around Stoke, haven't you? Yeah. What is it with them brown signs? What's this cultural quarter on it in Stoke? What he's saying is, what is it with all those brown signs? Uh, cultural centres. Cultural oh, quarter. Right. The I cultural quarter. I think it's, think it's sarca quarter sarcastic. Stoke. Isn't it? Yeah, I'm winding them all. Love, love to wind the Stoke is up. Uh, and of course, living here, there's lots of them around. So, uh, who? Obviously, would prefer a win, and and I think the dynamic trio uh, are going to really perform on Saturday. And I hope we get seven again. I really do. Oh, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be nice because that knows you know what that means for you, don't you? Mm. I was going to say, Chris, you have you to do yeah, with the nice. nudes. Yeah. You have to be. A, yeah. You have to. If Blue scores six and all this year, in any never game, yes, he, he has to do a show in complete nude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! The, the, oh, the one thing right. I will say uh, with that is, um, obviously, I, I had the pleasure of playing for both clubs. Yeah, um, Stoke are going quite well at the moment. At home, in particular, yeah. they've had a resurgence of form. Yeah, yeah. A bit like, a bit like Blues in terms of a, a few new players in the January window, and they're going quite well at home, in particular. They had a terrific result at Forest the other day. Um, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It's not going to be an easy game. Well, it's not going to be well. Uh, but so it makes it makes for a good game, and. Uh, 
you know. So it's just be interesting to see how that one turns out. Mm. I think mm. per, per, personally, Nick, I, I think it'll be a draw. I'm going to go yeah. for a draw, one one. Uh, you know what? I, I reckon we're going to beat. I mean, I, I, and I've not been this positive for a long time after after watching the highlights and that uh, over the weekend. I, I, I think we've got it. We've got it going up front, certainly. Okay, we've got uh, Jimmy Bloomfield, uh, Chock and Doy, <laughs> Chock and Doy. <laughs> he comes, it comes up every week. <laughs> Jonathan uh, Gransford, Jonathan Gransford divorce. Uh, uh, Oliver, what do you think? Uh, uh, oh, so against Stoke, give us your mm. predictions, Oliver. Um, is that? It'll be a tough game. Um, I think, we, to be honest, I think in general we're looking a lot better um, without Roberts at the minute. And I, yeah, I, 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 we're look, I just think we look more. <laughs> I just, nobody, nobody has said. <laughs> well, you probably. Will. I, 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 I just think we look more stable. To be honest, I just, don't. He's, he's good, but he's not as good as we we can have. I'm. I'd. I'd. I want to say one 0 but I'm. I'm gonna go one one. Mm, okay, cool. Okay, we've got a few more coming in. Chocks and EK, uh, love you a lot. Le- Trevor a lot. Yeah, love you a lot. Yeah. Uh, Peter Valentine. Ooh. Uh, Peter Lovenkranz. Like that one very much indeed. My favourite is still that one earlier, though, which was. Uh, uh, oh, what was it? What was it? What was it? Yeah, keep them clean, people, please. There's children on. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> There's some funny ones there that we're not Adi Bowl of Flowers from Dom, Dom Kavanagh. We've got three <laughs> minutes to go of the show. Adi, Adi Bowl of Flowers from Dom Kavanagh. That, was, that one made my stomach hurt the worst, mate. Um, so, well, what a night this has been. Noel Blake, like a legend and a hero of the Birmingham City faithful. Uh, from the 80s. I, I know I was joking when I said the 70s. I was going to say the 50s, actually, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, and for me, as, as, a, as a person, as a Birmingham City fan, to watch you put that Birmingham City shirt on and for me to laud and applaud you back in the day and then for me to talk to you tonight has been an honour. And I mean that. I genuinely, genuinely mean it. Um, the show, though, tonight remains and will always remain because this is now being recorded for Barry Lake, the Luton fan who sadly lost his life in Birmingham, who came down from, uh, came up from Luton uh, to watch a game of football and never went home. To you, my friend, to all your family, to all your friends, God bless you, rest in peace. Um, we, we're really humans at Birmingham City. We, we are, you know, I, I know we get a few numpties and one thing and all that, but generally, you know what, cool. we're all, a big, big family. And we will always, always, always come together in sad times, in bad times, and in good times. Uh, Noel Blake, thank you so much for joining us tonight, mate. And thank you for being so candid and honest earlier. And it takes a real, real proper person, and I wouldn't say man because women do it as well, a proper person to come out and say how you feel. Mate, I, I t- tell you what, you it's... it's it's blown me away, mate. I've got goosebumps on it again. Blow me away that has tonight, Noel. What a man. And you only live at Newcastle. We could meet for a pint in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't encourage him. Don't encourage him, Noel, please don't. <laughs> but no, Noel, thank you for giving your time up on a Monday night and talking to Birmingham City fans about Birmingham City uh, and about your times there and your hard times and your good times and your bad times because we all go through them. Right, but when you open up about them, it makes other people stand up and think, you know what, I need to talk about that, and it's well, good yeah, to talk. That's the thing, like you just said, it's you know, it's, it's important that you share. Mm. Definitely, mm. Definitely. definitely. Well, you know, that's the um, that's the idea. The idea. Bless you. I, I, I mean it, mate. From the heart of my bottom, I mean the bottom of my heart. <laughs> <laughs> This has been the Talk and Talk show. It's nine o'clock on a Monday night. Another 90 minutes have gone past and this has now been recorded forever, forever. It will be on YouTube. It'll be all, all over the place on Facebook, one thing or another. Um, our great guest tonight, the one and only chairman of the board, Mr. Alan Watton. Bye-bye, <laughs> <laughs> <Bye> everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> The man who fixes the, the... Well, he fixes everything. He fixes all our guests. He fixes 
I don't know, holes in walls or... <laughs> <laughs> No, Craig, you do so much work behind the scenes, mate. Guess who this is again? Oh, he's still at it. He's still at it. Um, you, you do so much hard work for, for us, and we genuinely, honestly, really appreciate what you do for us. And, and with this show that we do, without you, mate, it wouldn't be anywhere near what it is. God bless you, my friend. Thank you so, so very much for what you do for us. Uh, thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Next week, a guest just as good as Noel. Let's not no forget. one's as good as Noel. No Mick, one's as good as Noel. Mick Arthur joins yeah. us next oh, week. Maybe so there is. what a show. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Andrew Adams, a.k.a. Mr. Roby, turns up in his bathrobe every week. Have you ever watched it, by the way? Uh, no, come no, on. No, that means no. Sorry, mate. Because you hesitated, that absolutely means no. You've never watched it. You skip rap. <laughs> good night, everyone. <laughs> oh, from a you know, one of the best people that I know in my life, I promise you, the one and only Mr. Chris Brown, aka Mrs. Brown. Good evening, goodbye. <laughs> from myself, <laughs> good night, God bless, take care, have a great week. I hope we get three points on Saturday. Oh, I man. so want a bag of chips, I will even have extra vinegar on them, I promise you. <laughs> But the last words tonight are going to be from our, our guest, who's been an absolutely, truly inspiration tonight. The one and only ex-blues player, still blues legend, Noel Blake. Good evening, everybody, and thanks very much for the um, invite. And just keep right on. What a bloke. What an absolute legend. Good night, God bless. Take care. Bye. Good night, all Good night. night. Till the end of the day. We're so happy following the blues. We love you a